Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. It is, uh, you know, 7.07, Wednesday, July 20th. 69 degrees, got to be 78 today, WOBMAM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio. Streaming live on the Radio Pop app and WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. Pretty appropriate now that we have our next guest because uh, today I feel like I'm about 83 years old, to be honest with you, with the way my back feels and uh, the other maladies which I'm suffering from. So we are joined now by Denise Stapleton, BSN uh, elder life specialist at Ocean Medical Center, and we are talking about acute care of the elderly and understanding delirium. Good morning. How are you? Good. And yourself? I, I can't complain. I can't complain. Uh, so, Denise, before we kind of get into uh, the nuts and uh, bolts, uh, I'm always interested, especially with nurses. Um, you've been at Ocean Medical for how long? 25 years. Wow. 25 years. And, and for 25 years, for the most part, you've been dealing with uh, geriatric. Yes, I have. So do you recall, I mean, if you if you close your eyes and put yourself back into the Wayback Machine and think about, uh, you know, let's say 30 years ago, uh, why you decided to get into nursing and especially why you wanted to focus on geriatrics? Um, I think I always wanted to be a nurse, but I slowly worked my way up uh, the ladder. I worked actually, uh, I went to school as a medical assistant, worked here at a local doctor's office here in Tom's River. And I had always talked about it. And she's like, go, go, go. And so she pushed me into getting my nursing degree. And um, I think I've always had an affinity towards the older population, even when I was younger. I, you know, tend to relate to them much better. Okay. And so, and you really enjoy, obviously, you enjoy nursing, I right? do. I love what I do. Cool. Uh, okay. So what you do is deal with really acute care and the elderly. So why don't you explain what an ACE unit is or what an acute care of the elderly unit is? Well, it's a, a unit that's specific to the older population. Um, when we developed our unit, it's uh, specific colors for them, soothing to the eye, uh, large print signs. Our bathrooms are wider with... Um, special toilet seats, special showers, uh, low low tile floors, so no barriers, right. and larger um, doors so that walkers and wheelchairs can get into the bathrooms and move around. Right. And that's uh, – and, and it's um, – I think we don't think about that. I think, you know, even when you talk about the floors – Right and the and the low tile. I mean, I don't think we think about the fact that even those thresholds, those right. uh, those are those can be an issue, right? Yes, it can be a major issue for a tripping hazard. You know, and sometimes with older population, they don't feel because of back injuries, diabetes, neuropathy, and things like that. So they don't feel, and they can trip and injure themselves. Well, that's uh, that's great. So, what it, what are some of the benefits? I mean, aside from the the, the clear like uh, safety benefits, what other benefits are there? I mean, we're more in tune to the types of medications and things that can go wrong with the elderly population, and um, we also are in tune to their specific needs of transitioning from living at home, maybe going to assisted living, and or having to go to a long-term care facility. Cool. Uh, and and I, I I mean, this seems like such a no-brainer. Do all hospitals have that kind of unit? No, actually, they don't. And they really should because of the aging baby boomer population and because, like you said earlier, the uh, Ocean County population is significantly higher with uh, older patients. Right. Um, and so, uh, so is there a certain kind of special training that the nurses need to make sure that they're on this unit? Do they have to be certified in some kind of geriatric care? Yes, um, we're required to do uh, unit specific competencies for geriatrics. Um, one of the things that we do is every year or every couple years, they put us in a room with sensory deprivation, with special glasses, earmuffs, they put gloves on our hands, little things on our feet so we can mimic what's happening with the older population. Right. And um, we also have to uh, do niche modules and they're uh, like continuing education 
and for evidence-based practice for best care of the elder life. Right. So it's like uh, it, that. So so that that kind of that role play that you do is it reminds me. Um, why do I remember being in elementary school and they used to like they would like tape down your thumb and say, let yeah. me just show you how it is to try and live your life. Because, like, you know, they were, it was some kind of I think that was in a science class where they were showing you animals that don't have a thumb. Right. The right? opposing thumb. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. They're like, here, try to now try to live your life without a thumb. And you're like, oh, no problem. And you're like, oops, yeah, I can't do anything. Yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, I can't I certainly can't hitch a ride, although now with Uber, <laughs> I could use my use my pointer. Uh, so. So one of the things that you deal with a lot is delirium. So why don't you Correct. tell us all about delirium? Well, um, delirium is a sudden uh, onset of confusion and and behavior changes. And, you know, it, in some cases it can become life-threatening uh, if it's not uh, picked up on early and addressed. And, you know, some of the, the causes are infection Infection, I have to say, is one of the biggest ones, a simple urinary tract infection that a lot of older people do not realize that they have can cause a delirium, uh, electrolyte imbalances, changes in medications within the last week, polypharmacy, you know, five or more medications. And as we know, a lot of the older patients are on more than five medications. I mean, I look at charts and everything, and I can see people on 18 medications. Oh, my goodness. You know, it's crazy sometimes. That's uh, that. Oh my God, that's. And I know we had a, we actually had a discussion, uh, probably two weeks ago now, where we had a long discussion about uh, drug interaction and and having a drug interaction specialist. In fact, I think at uh, at Ocean Medical, you have like a whole unit that focuses on that, right? And on on pharma, making sure that the pharmaceuticals kind of match up, that somebody will do an audit of your of your of your um, yes. pharmaceuticals. Yes, actually. Um, we just recently, each floor now has a pharmacist on the floor. Oh, that's great. And so if we're looking at something, at our medications, we can go to them and say, hey, what about this or what about that? And then they can do an in-depth research and find out if it's appropriate or not appropriate for so, the patient. So what are the signs and symptoms uh, of delirium? I, I mean, I... I I have a thousand jokes that I can use right now, but I'm going to let those go. So go ahead. Um, they can be, you know, restless, upset. They can be mixing up their days and their nights. Um, they can be sleepy, which what we call a quiet delirium, where they're resting in the bed quiet. Um, they can be forgetful. Sometimes they can have some slurred speech, um, sometimes not making sense, unable to concentrate. Um, other times they're more alert, even sometimes hypervigilant. Um, and, uh, sometimes just difficulty staying awake. That also could be, uh, all of those things also <laughs> seem like symptoms of having an early morning radio show, by the way. Yeah. That sounds like right? our exactly. morning here. Zach, don't you feel like that? Like they just pretty much, they, that's pretty much us. I think yeah, we're delirious. They just described our morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, listen, so, so, and so what are the most common causes of delirium? Well, like I said before, infection, that's a, a big one and medication changes. And also sometimes they forget, you know, right. as older people. Well, it's just are, age, right? It's sometimes age. it's just they age. They're just forgetting medications. Another big one is having surgery and anesthesia. Right. Is uh, that. It, is it a permanent thing? Um, No, it's it can be reversible, um, but in some cases it can be permanent. And uh, Unfortunately, that happened to my father last year. Oh. He had two different types of infection. He went into delirium and, uh, you know, he didn't never returned home. Right. And he uh, came I'm so home. sorry. Yep. Yeah, it's all good. Um, so so what are the so what what are, what are the kind of the high risk? Uh, what are the high risk things that kind of occur that can put someone into the into that higher bracket for developing delirium? I th Aside you, from the multiple medications you, you mentioned and uh, old age. And, and comorbidities, you know, do they have diabetes? Do they have Parkinson's disease? Um, and other cognitive impairments, psych, uh, psychiatric issues also put people at risk. Okay, so good. So when we come back, Denise Stapleton, elder life specialist, BSN, RN, BC, uh, you got a lot of like, there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, abbreviations after your name. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about some of the treatment options, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, and kind of how Ocean Medical helps, uh, especially with the uh, help program. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, then ultimately we're giving you your magic wand. So big day for you. Wake <laughs> up with Jeremy Grunin back after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin wherever you go. Download the Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Yes, we're back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, Denise Stapleton, BSN, RNBC, Elder Life Specialist at Ocean Medical Center. So what treatment options are available for delirium? What do we do? Well, sometimes we treat them with medications and also looking at their medication list and removing medications that could possibly be uh, a causing factor of it. Also, um, treating infections, providing antibiotics to them, and, um, you know, also reorientation, stimulation to keep them cognitively engaged. Cool. Uh, what can a family do? I mean, what questions can they ask? What what uh, what what can they do if a loved one is hospitalized and experiencing delirium? Well, you know, be aware of uh, the causes of delirium. You know, ask how can it happen. Um, be uh, reorient them. Stay with them. Reorient them. Bring fam- pictures. Uh, reminisce about old uh, times and remind them. Right. Cool. Um, and then so. Tell me about the HELP program. What is that? Well, basically, it was uh, developed by Dr. Sharon Inouye uh, from Yale University and her colleagues to um, help the elder li- help, sorry, uh, to help prevent delirium in the hospitalized elder patient uh, and prevent functional decline and falls and to help uh, the older patient return home and maintain their maximal level of independence and maintaining hydration, nutrition, and sleep patterns. Cool. And uh, and and so what do they kind of do with the patients? Well, what they do is they go in and uh, sit down and speak with them. And we have one gentleman, Buzzy, he's been with us for many years. He's, I want to say he's like 93, then 94. Then just say it, say it. He's 93 Good. or 94 years old. And he relates so well to the patients. He goes in, he speaks with them because... A lot of our patients are from up north, and he is from up north himself, and they find uh, that they have a lot of friends in common or acquaintances and places that, that they used to visit, and it makes the patients feel very comfortable. Cool. So that's why it's important, though, because once yeah. it makes the patients feel more comfortable, they're better. They, they're more likely to be able to deal with this. Right, and relaxed. Got it. Good. Got it. Are there other important things that elderly patients or caregivers should know about in terms of aging and medical conditions? Um, you know, it's really important for uh, a patient to have an advanced directive or a pulsed, right. you know, to let your loved ones and your caregivers know what your wishes are, you know, whether you want to be resuscitated, not be resuscitated, you know, and where, where you'd like to live or not like to live. Right. And, you know, your end of life issues. Um, a strong person. I always say this to have a very strong person who can stand up to other family members and say, no, this is what mom or dad wants. Right. And having a current medication list and is- and medications, issues, and physicians handy. And what I personally always had done for my parents, had a copy of all that on the refrigerator so when I would have to call 911, all I had to do was pull it off and hand it to them. So the hospital right. had all the information that they needed. Gotcha. Uh, Denise, are you prepared for your magic wand question? I think I am. Okay, good. So we're giving it to you. We're giving you the magic wand, the pixie dust, the fairy dust, the ability to make an impact. What are you doing with it? Um, you know, I would like the the public to be educated on delirium and the issues with the older population and also something I personally would like to see is people that are uh, guardians for people who don't have loved ones to get into the hospital and see the patients before they're making, you know, all these decisions and, you know, treat those people that they're caring for with respect and dignity. Absolutely. So it's an awareness issue. It's also a a really kind of digging in and paying attention issue, right? Right. Um, Seems so basic, but it's Sad that we have to use our magic wand on basic stuff like that. Uh, Denise Stapleton, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go through this part real quick. If someone wants to learn about becoming a help volunteer or about the ACE unit, 
Uh, they can call 732-836-4400, mm-hmm. right? Um, they can uh, they can all, always go to the Ocean Medical website and learn more, right? And uh, listen, uh, and that's all for the Meridian website. Uh, Denise, thank you so much for all you're doing to help our elderly. It's such an important population, especially here at the Jersey Shore. So thanks for everything you're doing every day. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Today. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Back after the Hometown View in the news. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310.